Hey guys, as some of you may know, I did about four golden exposure videos, which were basically short videos, and I gave about three exposures or four exposures or whatever it was in each video. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to reel out a list of exposures for you, but what I'm going to do first is give you a little warning okay and the warning goes basically like this more than anything more than anything in the world what you need to do is go and see an OCD specialist okay because you need to have the tools and you need to have somebody there to spot you and spot what you're doing because what you have to understand is everybody's HOCD, OCD, pure or call it what you want, everyone's is different, okay? Some people just have intrusive thoughts. Some people just have intrusive feelings. Some people have intrusive images, urges, impulses, etc. Some people have a combination, okay? Some people do different mental compulsions to other people. Some people do compulsions that are so subtle that you don't even know you're doing them. Okay? And self-directed exposures isn't really the way to go, but I'm doing this for the people who can't really afford it. Maybe they're in a foreign country, you know, Maybe they can't get access to a therapist. I'm doing this for the little guy. But I want you to be very careful. And I, what I'd like you to do is start small. Okay? Very, very gradually. Okay? With, start with what frightens you least and work upwards. Okay? If there's one exposure on this list that seems... Um, too extreme, leave it alone and just do something that's lower down, if you will, on the totem pole, okay? So that's a big warning. You know, there's no excuse really not to go and see a pro because you can get professionals online now. You don't even have to leave your own home. It can be done from home via Skype or whatever. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's best to be safe. But anyway, here is a list of some exposures, some of which I've already mentioned in my golden exposure video. And But there's a few extra ones here as well, you know, for you to sort of think about, okay? So the first one is basically... Whatever your intrusive thought is, say, for example, what if I'm gay, okay? You know, sing that thought, okay? Sing it to the tune of, you know, what it says, your happy birthday or twinkle, twinkle, little star. Linkin Park's in the end, you know, or even the Benny Hill music. Anyone ever remember the Benny Hill music? Da, 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 What if I'm gay? What if I'm gay? What if I'm fucking gay? What if I'm gay? What if I'm gay? Okay. <laughs> because what that does is it takes the edge off. By singing it and making it a little bit humorous, it takes the edge off the, the fear and the seriousness. And I, I believe that that will allow you to habituate more. And very importantly when you feel triggered in any of these exposures, the worst thing you can do is ritualize to do any compulsions. The whole idea, in my opinion anyway, of doing an exposure is to confront your fear, whether it be a thought or a situation or a feeling or whatever the case may be, and not to do any rituals. The RP in ERP, it's all about response prevention. Response prevention is the most important part because when you refuse to respond to the thought, 
that is when your brain will start to habituate, okay? I had a little amount of trepidation doing this video because I don't want people to go hurting themselves. But I want to give you these anyway, and I'm just hoping and praying that you'll be careful. Because some people can get so triggered that they don't know what to do. Okay? But basically what you do is you don't, uh, you know, ritualize. You don't try to figure things out. You don't try to, you know, you sit with the anxiety. Okay? You sit with the anxiety and you allow it to be, and you be very mindful of it. You know, whatever anxiety you feel doing this, these exposures, just observe the anxiety without getting involved. Okay? Anyway, the next one. Write the thought over and over. So let's use the, the standard, you know, thought, what if I'm gay? Okay? Write, what if I'm gay, 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 all the way down the page. Then turn the page over, write it all the way down the next page. Then get another page and write it again and keep going and keep going and keep going until you're literally bored. Okay? Right then. What's the next one? Make a poem of the thought. Anyone ever write poems? You could even write a silly poem, a comical poem. But whatever your intrusive thought is, what if I'm gay, make a poem of it. You know, what if I'm gay, I feel like it today. You know, and <laughs> that's all I got, guys. That's all I got. Right. Songify the thought. The app is free. Okay. The next one is draw or paint the thought. Now, I remember years ago seeing, I think it may have been on YouTube or maybe it was on the TV, there was a guy who had scrupulosity uh, OCD and he was basically writing, uh, you know, the number or the word or whatever it was on um, a big piece of paper, like a big, big sheet of paper. And he wrote it in kind of like bubble writing. And he took his time. He was very slow. He was feeling anxious the whole time. And he was colouring uh, it in, you know. Maybe one letter is red, one, let one letter is yellow, or numbers or whatever it is, right? But he was taking his time doing it, okay? All right. So draw or paint the thought. Right, I've also covered this as well before. Record the thought into an MP3 player and play it back to yourself, okay? Now, the thing is, this is my take on things, right? When a person has an intrusive thought, what they tend to do is immediately just try and suppress it or push it out of awareness, right? But when you actually write the thought down, okay, you are basically put in a position where you know you're confronting it. We're, sorry, not write it. Yeah, write it down, but also record it into an MP3 player, like like I'm talking here. Okay, so record it into an MP3 player. Put the MP3 player on a loop system, okay, and play it back to yourself. It could be more than one intrusive thought. It could be several. Okay. But play it back, play it back, lay in your bed and play the thoughts back to yourself over and over and over and over. If you can only do a minute at first, then be gentle with yourself, okay? Be very gentle with yourself. Just do a minute. Maybe the next day you can do five minutes. Maybe the, the day after that you can go longer and so on, okay? Approach it very, very gradually, okay? very gradually there's no need i mean my style before was to run at things like a bull running towards a gate but that's not really the way to go the way the way to go is gradual okay so record the thought and just as a bit of advice 
I would say, recorded into an MP3 player and not your phone. Because back some time ago, ages ago, I put an intrusive thought of mine into a into my phone and I was in work and the thing switched itself on how it did it I don't know and I was just lucky that um, nobody was there to witness it and that was for me that was kind of like uh, scrupulosity thoughts and harm thoughts and stuff like that okay but of course, you know, this type of thing works for any form of um, power or. Right. Elaborate the thought into a full script with a terrible ending. Okay. So basically, this is kind of like imaginal exposure. It's, you know, you, 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 you put in the thought, you know, what if I'm gay? into perhaps a mini story or something like that and at the end of the, the story it's a really sad freakish ending you know and you'll trigger yourself you'll trigger yourself but that's what you want because we move into our triggers okay that's what we do we don't move away we move towards them right when you do write that, read it over and over and over to yourself, okay? Right, here's a simple one. Write the thought onto sticky notes and stick them all over the house, okay? Now, obviously, you've got to be very careful. You know, if you're living with somebody, you know, especially if you have H or C D or P or C D or something like that, you know, you've got to be careful. But write them onto notes and put one by your bed so you look at the thought every night before you go to bed. And, you know, the whole purpose of this is to demonstrate irrelevance, okay? It's to show, it's to eventually habituate to the thought so that it becomes irrelevant and important. And here's the thing, most people try to get rid of their thoughts, but that's the wrong goal. If you're doing that, you've got the wrong goal. The, it's the brain's natural instinct to think, okay? You can't control it. So, it's to deem the thought as irrelevant so that even if the thought does come into your head, you won't care. You won't care. Notice I haven't sworn in this video? I'm getting good. Right, okay. Write the thought on sticky... Oh, I've done that. Jesse, you're an idiot. Right. Translate the thought into another language. Okay? So go online and you can get... You no, know, you can get like English to German, English to French, you know, French to English, blah, blah, blah. Go on one of those things on the internet and translate the thought. Have some fun with it. You know, play Scrabble. Play word games with your intrusive thought. What if I'm gay? You know, I think I'm attracted to so-and-so down, down Walmart. I think I'm uh, attracted to, you know, uh, Doug in, uh, in Best Buy or, you know, wherever you are in the world, okay? Right. Say the words backwards. Whatever your intrusive thought is, say it backwards, okay? What if I'm gay? Gay, I'm what if? You know, sort of just, just toy with the idea. Just play with it, okay? Right. Carry the written word or the written thought around in your pocket or tucked inside your clothing. Now, this can also be done for false attraction as well, right? is, you know, with, with false attraction, you, you might have a picture of a, a co-worker or you might have a picture of Brad Pitt or something like that. And every now and again, look at it. You'll get triggered. You'll get really triggered. But once again, you don't ritualize and you don't do any uh, response. 
okay you don't make any response to the thought it's response prevention ritual prevention allow the anxiety to be now that's that's with a picture but like the the thing said it's also the thought you carry the thought around with you what if i'm gay or whatever it is carry it with you put it in your wallet put it in the little tucked away inside your your phone case or whatever carry it with you and every now and again look at it without ritualizing okay just give me a sec right here's a pretty scary one stand in front of the mirror stand in front of the mirror look yourself deep in the eyes okay deep in the eyes what if i'm gay what if i'm gay what if i'm gay or oh, i am gay or whatever comes into your head right keep looking at yourself in the eyes and say it with conviction conviction i am gay or whatever the case may be okay there was one guy i spoke to him not so long back he couldn't even say the word gay he said the g word and what shall i do jesse what shall i do well i said what you want to do it was a bit naughty of me really because i kind of triggered him but i said what you want to do is write gay 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 all the way down the page he didn't respond he didn't respond he wasn't in a place where he was ready to take on the challenge you know and in all fairness this you know this stuff isn't easy right okay where am i right try to make the thought even worse to the point of absurdity okay what if i'm gay or i am gay and i'd like to fuck that guy in his big hairy asshole okay sorry i did swear then but it was for the purpose of you know so just blow the thought up make it worse make it more triggering and because that's what we want we want to move into our triggers we don't want to mess around you okay but like i said use a bit of common sense and don't go don't start too high up do it gradual okay and i'm going to keep reminding you through this video you need to see an ocd specialist there's no excuse you can access them online you know most of you anyway there's people in certain countries who can't which is why i'm doing this but there's therapists everywhere okay we are reigning in therapists so there's no excuse have at it okay right visual exposure now i think I've, I've sort of covered this you know a couple of minutes ago visual exposure look at images or videos of, of things that trigger your thoughts without ritualizing movies with gay storylines yeah i mean you can watch movies with gay storylines that, that's a classic okay i don't recommend porn because porn can be a compulsion and it can be a form of checking and reassurance and all the rest of it but i think if and I, i'm going out on a limb saying this but i think if you have the right intention the right intention and i would say this is for slightly more advanced people if you have the right intention of watching gay porn for the sake of exposure maybe maybe we'll call that a gray area okay we'll call that a gray area but 
basically for the newbies stay away from porn for now and just focus on movies you know where you might see a gay couple kissing or something like that right okay wear triggering clothes wear triggering clothes so for, for the guys you know wear something pink wear a, a gay pride bangle or something um there's you know i mean what do gays wear look around you study what gays wear and wear something similar and go out in public with it and for the girls obviously the the reverse is true if a girl is afraid of being um a lesbian then wear the type of clothes that lesbians would wear okay Ooh, here's a good one read coming out stories read them and i would say write them write your own invent your own pretend that you're a movie director or pretend that you're a script writer and if you were writing a script uh, for a movie i mean let's say this was true let's say you actually had to write a script how would you write it what would you say so write a coming out story about yourself and read coming out stories now this will be extremely triggering and i do advise caution okay um you know don't be stupid don't rush at things like a bull at a gate but try it i i would say if you're going to write a coming out story just write a mild one and a short one to begin with and see how how you feel when you do feel anxious i'm repeating myself but i need to sit with the anxiety don't rush to google don't rush to youtube don't ritualize don't mentally review your past don't do any check-in sit with the anxiety it's only anxiety it's only anxiety that's all it is okay anxiety is not going to kill you wear a gay pride t-shirt or jewelry well i've just covered that okay another one is to actually go to gay bars this is in vivo exposure this is going in field okay you're going in field and you know you're basically you're putting yourself in the presence of gay people you're going to be seeing gay people hug and kiss okay you could even get a phone number of a gay it could be part of the treatment okay but again if you're not ready don't rush into it okay but basically go to where gays are you can go to a gay rally you can go to uh, a gay convention of something um if gays are picking in in the city and throwing dildos at people you, you know j just go and join them okay right here's a good one look at a picture of someone you know and maybe you feel you're attracted to this could be your idiot boss this could be somebody you work with this could be your next door neighbor this could be you know somebody on facebook whatever okay but look at a picture of someone you know and say sexually charged things to them okay look at a picture of of somebody and say i want to fuck you in your fat fucking hairy butthole okay or something like that okay um and try and make it funny you know i want to hang you upside down and i want to um you know play badminton with your bollocks you know or something like that you want to use his testicles for a speed bag <laughs> right okay enough of the shit jess just get on with it 
yeah anyway use a really triggering one write a homoerotic letter to someone but do not send it obviously okay so write a homoerotic letter to somebody let's say your fat fucking boss at work uh, I promised I wasn't going to swear in this video. Uh, I always mess up. Just imagine you you thought you were attracted to your boss at work. Okay? Then what you do is you write a letter to your boss, you know, sort of conveying your lust for him and describe all the things that you want to do to him. You know? And obviously, do not send it. After you write it, you're going to feel triggered. Stay with the trigger. Stay with the trigger. Stay with the trigger. Stay with the trigger until you calm down, 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 down. And then burn the thing. Okay? And then perhaps the next day, perhaps try it again. Okay? You, you've got to understand... And this isn't reassurance. I'm just talking about feelings here. Feelings are not facts. Okay? And anxiety is not going to kill you. Okay? Look at pictures of gay couples. Okay? Go on the internet and look at pictures of gay couples. Okay? Put yourself in the presence of your triggers to practice response prevention okay let me repeat that put yourself in the company in the presence of your trigger with the intention of not responding to it to practice response prevention that's what it's all about response prevention is the important part okay Right, I've covered this. Attend a gay rights event. And I've also basically said this one too, where it says, write an imaginal exposure script where you come out and tell your family. You know, and you could sort of Google imaginal exposure scripts and it can give you ideas of what to write. But basically, use the thing, okay? A little bit of a trigger warning for the people who um, don't want to hear it, okay? Let's say, for example, you write an imaginal exposure script. What if I'm gay? And I thought it was HOCD. <laughs> I thought it was, but now I realize that it's real feelings. This is the script, by the way, okay? Before you start freaking out. I discovered now it's really f real feelings and I, I got to tell my family. And you write the story where you leave your bedroom, you go downstairs, you sit at the table with your parents and you tell them, Mom, Dad, I'm gay. There's no getting away from it. You know, and sort of elaborate like that, okay? And that in and of itself is gonna is gonna frighten the shit out of you but once again what are we doing here we're practicing response prevention and not ruminating not trying to figure anything out not trying to look for a conclusion not trying to look for an answer you sit with the anxiety can you imagine somebody put in because i know i've i've had this done to me and it pisses me off have, have somebody ever taking a, a spoon out of a cup of coffee and it's hot and they put it on your hand oh and you and you that's your response you you pull away well metaphorically speaking you know exposure and practicing the, the response prevention is like having the spoon put on your hand but you're not moving your hand you allow it to burn a little bit okay it's not going to kill you you know and so basically you're doing that in a psychological and emotional sense okay when the trigger comes at you you are not going to respond right so what else have i got here 
What else have I got here? Stop avoiding TV shows or people you think you are attracted to because avoiding will make your thoughts worse. Now, all avoidance is bad, okay? You know, avoidance, and I can tell you firsthand from somebody who've suffered with scrupulosity OCD, harm OCD I've had, and I've had various other indescribable uh, forms of OCD, um, my biggest thing of all is losing what I love. And a lot of my power or and OCD revolved around that. Okay? And there was a time I couldn't even leave the house. Do I still... Do I still have a little bit of it? Sometimes, yes. But I was avoiding the outdoors. I become almost a recluse. And it nearly drove me to the brink. But you have to stop avoiding things. So, these TV shows, that shopping mall, the guy in the street who normally stands at the bus stop at the same time every day, you know, whatever it is you're afraid to, that, that you're avoiding, run to it. Run to it and don't ritualize, okay? It's kind of like, and I can't remember who, who, who said this. Somebody said, I, I saw it on the, on the internet. It's like dipping your toes into water, okay? You know, when you're not avoid, you know, you dip your toes in gradually. That's what the exposure, that's what, gra you know, being sensible with the exposures is, you know, doing things gradually. But when you're, not avoiding, that's kind of like going in a bit deeper, in a way, right? So, if there's somebody at the shopping mall that, that you're attracted to, go there anyway. Live your life despite OCD. Live in spite of it. Don't let it control you, okay? It's all about behavior. You change your behavior and you change your brain. So, if there's somebody on TV, there's a show th that you love watching it, and there's somebody you think you're attracted to, watch it. Watch it. Feel the anxiety. Don't try to figure anything out. Don't ritualize. Happy days. You know, w with time, your anxiety will come down. Anyway, guys, it's time for me to go. I've been talking long enough. Thank you very much, and take care. Bye for now. Bye.